little introduction on me before I start. Uh, my name is Michael Raggi. I'm currently a senior threat intelligence analyst at Anomaly. That is a giant picture of my face. So if anybody can't see me in the back, that's what I look like. The stage turns everyone into a vain monster. Um, formerly, I was employed at BAE Systems, working in the cyber threat intelligence team as part of their GSOC, as well as at Looking Glass Cybersecurity as part of their Morgan Stanley dedicated analyst team. And as Kristen said, I was previously employed recovering stolen art, and I have recovered over $11 million worth of stolen art in my career. So anyone can really do what we do if you have enough time in front of a computer. I'm here today to tell you a research story, specifically a hunting story. In this story, we're going to learn how RTF metadata can be used to track nation state adversaries from China. We're going to learn that sometimes our security tools create analysis byproducts like backslashes and other characters that we need to track to keep up with our adversaries. We're going to learn that one phishing builder has been in continuous use by the APT Goblin Panda from 2010 through mid-2018, and that despite multiple overhauls of this phishing builder, it appears that unique RTF tags remain that can allow analysts to pivot on data and be able to identify you new unique campaigns. So like most good stories, this one starts with a villain, Goblin Panda. This is a CrowdStrike name for a APT threat. And to help us with our APTs today, we have celebrity APT ambassadors for the APAC region, Seth Rogen and James Franco. And I promise that this joke will make less and less sense as the presentation goes on, so get excited. So um, this APT, Goblin Panda, is known to be aligned with Chinese state interests. And I say state interests rather than China with a capital C, because I personally, and I don't think it's been published, that this group is associated with a Chinese intelligence organization or a Chinese military organization. Rather, it's possible that it is some sort of group operating in tandem with the Chinese state interest without that exact relationship being known. However, scholarship published by different security companies as well as different certs throughout the world associate their primary activity with Chinese state interest. They're known also as Konami's, which is a name I've seen published by FireEye. And as Sarah was nice enough to highlight yesterday from FireEye, there was an attribution mistake in calling them China 1937 CN group and that confluence of naming has the Vietnamese cert calling this group China 1937 TN team, despite some attribution deviations there. So they're primarily known for targeting governmental organizations along the South China Sea region. Specifically, Vietnam is their primary area of operation. So back to the story. How did I personally come to start tracking Goblin Panda and their RTF phishing lore. Specifically, the metadata we're talking about are RTF files associated with phishing. In my open source tracking on Twitter and in just seeing people talking about this at conferences as well as papers published by security companies like Fortinet, I began to see RTF phishing files, phishing attachments that were for CVE 2012-0158, a vulnerability that was patched about, what, several years ago now, six, seven years ago now, all of these metadata, uh, I'm sorry, all of these RTF phishing documents had metadata associated with them in the author and operator field. And that's going to be this field right here that was associated with a large number of RTF phishing files. So before we dive into the actual activity and the clusters of activity, let me give you a little bit of a background on RTF metadata. So RTFs are files that can be associated and, I'm sorry, compiled and attached to phishing emails to target entities once they've been weaponized with common vulnerability exploits. When you create an RTF file, it applies a number of RTF metadata fields to that file that can be viewed in properties. So specifically, two that are interesting are the author and the operator field. For example purposes, I compiled an RTF file using my personal machine, not my professional machine, so the red team crowd don't think you're getting over on me. Um, I utilized VirusTotal, which is the user interface on the left, and VirusTotal Intelligence, which is the string section on the right that you see, to upload the file and see how it appears. You'll notice my name appears in both sections as the author and the operator. That's indicative of this being a persona level IOC. So that means at the operator level, when an RTF is created, this is information pulled from either a shared code base or the actual operator machine and applied to the file that's delivered to the victim. That's a great IOC to be utilizing in your research. A little more about RTFs. Um, two other fields of RTF metadata that I want to highlight are the version number and the title of those RTFs that can also be applied. 
The title can be a unique value that describes the file that's being delivered, and the version number is an internal version number which is not describing a serialized document that's created, so you save one RTF, it's not gonna be one. It has a shared version number for the code that is actually created. So if you're compiling RTF files from a shared code base, in this case, Microsoft Office, it's going to have an internal version number. So if a threat actor is utilizing a custom phishing builder, it's a good bet that they're going to have a custom internal version number associated with that that you can use to pivot between RTFs and possibly RTF campaigns. So now that we've talked a little bit about RTFs and the data associated with them, it's time to identify our adversary. In this case, Schrodinger. The title of this presentation is Schrodinger's Backslash. Schrodinger's Backslash is a term that a colleague of mine came up with, again, Sarah Jones of FireEye. We were discussing a uh, campaign in which these were being utilized where these two strings were appearing in association with RTF phishing files. In addition to being associated with Goblin Panda, they were also subject to a pretty interesting analysis quirk that occurred utilizing VirusTotal. You'll notice that there are three versions of each of these strings associated with both of these Schrodinger's backslash author and operator metadata fields. Well, the reason for this, and this is something that is no longer active in the VirusTotal product, it has been fixed and they've addressed it and in the new version functions perfectly, but you'll notice that on the left side here in the author field, there are two backslashes. And on the right side, there's only one backslash. So this is the same sample. However, we're seeing a different intelligence artifact in two locations about the same sample. So in digging on this, it was kind of troublesome. I was trying to figure out, well, why is this double backslash appearing in one place and not the other? Why am I not getting results for the double backslash? Well, what I learned was is VirusTotal created a very simple regex to keep this field on the right, which is how the actual code was written, from rendering as Unicode in the user interface. So they had a very small regex which added an additional backslash. And if you didn't know that, it created a lot of difficulties in your analysis. However, otherwise, it would have rendered the UTF, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Unicode script in the user interface to be very sloppy and hard to read. So it took some digging to identify my analysis byproducts and understand specifically what I was looking for. So what's the takeaway from a hunting perspective? Well, if you're searching in VirusTotal for the double backslash, the single backslash, or no backslash at all, you're gonna get results. But if you're searching for exact strings in your tip or in open source, you could be like me, putting the double backslash between quotes in Google and coming up with no results, thinking that this is a bad IOC. So, to invoke again Schrodinger, in the same way the cat is simultaneously alive and dead, Schrodinger's backslash exists, it exists in duplicate, and it does not exist at all. Make sure we account for all versions in our hunting exercises. So now on to the fun stuff, the actual activity clusters and what we're looking at. The tool here that we are viewing is Anomaly's ThreatStream Explore tool. The red circles on the screen are going to be hashes of the RTF phishing files that I've identified by pivoting on that Schrodinger's backslash RTF metadata author and operator field. Again, that's that value there. And the green circles that we see are going to be data or RTF metadata that have been inserted into the platform and pivoted on to draw connections between samples. The blue square at the center of the screen highlights the three data points that link this presentation and these samples on the screen together. And those are the bullet points on the screen. It's the Schrodinger's backslash metadata author and operator field. It is the RTF phishing file. All of them are RTF phishing files. And they all have a default ANSI code page for simplified Chinese. As I mentioned earlier, this is a group believed to be associated with Chinese state interests, possibly Chinese actors. It would make sense their default ANSI code page is simplified Chinese. It's also bad OPSEC. You should change that if you're trying to do campaigns globally, um, as that is an indicator of the possible area of operation for operators. This cluster that we're seeing here is just the magnified bottom portion of the previous graph that we had viewed. And again, that blue square is going to be the metadata author and operator field for Schrodinger's backslash, RTF phishing files, and the default ANSI code page. They're also all CVE 2012-0158 exploits, a very old exploit by all considerations. This is samples pretty much from 2012, to, I'm sorry, 2014 to 2018. However, they're utilizing a patched exploit which remains effective in the region of Vietnam. 
Other areas that remain um, a, as linking artifacts between these different samples is that all were uploaded to VirusTotal from Vietnam. Additionally, all of the RTF phishing files have Vietnamese names. All of this overlaps with the area of operation for Goblin Panda. Additionally, in the instance that the RTF successfully exploited a system, pulled down additional files from a C2, there is a unique C2 pattern that is associated with Goblin Panda that also includes Vietnamese language and Vietnamese geography. Specifically, the pattern that is included is subdomain, dot primary domain dot TLD, and it is usually a Vietnamese word dot Vietnamese geography dot TLD. So these red underlined sections are those that fall into that pattern. An example would be nhtbao dot chatpacific dot com or dalat dot vietnam dot net. Apologies for my horrible Vietnamese, but those are a recurring sample that several people have published on and is consistent with these RTF files that we've identified. Now that we've established a set of samples with that initial Schrodinger's backslash metadata author and operator field, I wanted to see if we could take this further. Can I take the initial string and drop windows from it and just pivot on those three versions of the Schrodinger's backslash string to find more activity? What I found was, yes, interestingly, I could. By pivoting on these values, I was able to identify a sample from November 2010. This sample was an RTF file that was a CVE 2012-0158 in Vietnamese language. All three of those aspects were consistent with the previous cluster of samples I had been identifying. Additionally, this string from my original Schrodinger's backslash metadata author and operator field appears again in the author and operator field, but now appended to the end of additional characters. This is a strong indication that this sample is possibly attributed to the same group and worth pivoting deeper on. So, and looking at this closer, I identified a pretty cool aberration in that when looking at the virus total user interface, the Schrodinger's backslash string was not displayed. Instead, it was English language words like John Doe or user or admin, things that aren't going to arouse suspicion by users initially. But when looking at the strings of the RTF, what I identified was it appeared this document had been compiled three times, possibly as a means to conceal RTF metadata information. The first string, was the Schrodinger's backslash two string. The second appearing higher in the strings was the author and operator of stone. And then finally, appearing in higher in the strings was the third admin user John Doe string. So this put together a pretty cool profile of things to pivot on further. I pivoted on the Schrodinger's backslash new string, this here, and then this really unique title that was also associated with the RTF metadata. And what did I find? Well, to invoke Juan yesterday, I found a slew of historic samples to conduct a little bit of paleontology on. The sample we were just looking at is this yellow sample appearing at the bottom of the screen. The blue box in the center similarly highlights shared data points between all of the samples that are appearing in this cluster. And the common aspects of this cluster, again, are the Schrodinger's backslash string, author and operator, and really unique title. And from these clusters, visually graphing them, I was able to tease out unique sets of targeting historically. Specifically, a cluster in India, a cluster associated with Philippine military targeting, a cluster associated with Tibetan and Nepalese refugee targeting that included the US Department of State individuals tasked to this project, as well as more contemporary CVE samples associated with possible testing. So let's dig into a couple of these campaigns up close. Tibetan and Nepalese refugee targeting. In 2012, utilizing CVE 2012-0158, this particular sample, which contains the Schrodinger's backslash metadata author and operator field, appeared to target the Office of Tibet, the Director of Reception Center for New Arrivals from Tibet, the US Department of State officials involved with migration and naturalization, and the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees representation in Nepal. And the lore that they utilized as part of this campaign included Nepalese geography and invoked Kampa Tibetan tribesmen, which were primarily associated with insurgency in Nepal in 1960. This is a very targeted spearfish, targeting all three of those audiences associated with an issue known to be one of the five poisons in China, Tibetan independence movement. Around the same time, in August 2012, a fish was identified again with that Schrodinger's backslash string CV 2012 
that appeared to target the personal Gmail accounts of individuals associated with Philippine security forces. You'll see here, all of these emails from the header are Gmail. Individuals from the president of Philippine Home Economics Association, former members of the Mutual Defense Board, Center of Philip, I'm sorry, uh, photo, General, photo Journalist Center of Philippines, and the Directorate of the Philippine National Police appear to have received this fish. And again, as far as lures go, they were dealing with issues associated with security. This is the last Goblin Panda campaign I'm going to cover before pivoting into some more interesting clusters that this string has led us to. CVE 2016-0022 was disclosed on February 9th, 2016. The compilation date on the sample identified utilizing the Schrodinger's backslash author and operator fields was from December 19th, 2014, which would appear to indicate, unless the date was manipulated, that this was a possible testing sample or in the wild sample from a zero day exploit for Microsoft SharePoint. As I mentioned, it includes the author and operator field and within the strings of this email, I'm sorry, within the strings of this sample, which was uploaded to VirusTotal from China, the email, hyperlink to an email of a prominent Chinese mathematician appeared who has worked extensively with elliptical curves and attended the International Congress of Mathematics. If a sample is being uploaded to virus total that appears to have previously been a zero day, possibly associated with testing or in the wild, we have to ask ourselves, why are these individuals associated with it? I have not drawn an intelligence conclusion associated with that. However, it is an immensely interesting persona artifact that requires further research on. Now that we have pivoted on Goblin Panda, identified a current and historic cluster, can we take the string even further? What I found was yes. This is the same cluster that we looked at earlier with the same string, however now, We've added a cluster here for a sample associated with a campaign tied to APT10, or Stone Panda. So what is a Stone Panda? Again, let's ask our APT friends. Stone Panda is an APT believed to be aligned with Chinese state interests, specifically the MSS, or Ministry of State Security. That is not an attribution that I came up with. Rather, I am referring to the Department of Justice indictment of two individuals associated with that group. Uh, specifically for targeting managed service providers to conduct intellectual property theft as part of the Cloud Hopper campaign. And why am I throwing all these different APT names at you? Cloud Hopper, which is a campaign, Stone Panda, which is a CrowdStrike name, APT10, which is a name associated with FireEye, Hogfish, which I believe is iDefense's name. Well, it kind of goes back to that example that Amy gave yesterday about different parts of the elephant. We all have different telemetry, different visibility, and different understanding of campaigns associated with APTs. And we call them different things to approximate the parts of the activity that we perceive from our telemetry's perspective. So why, in this case, are we associating this with Stone Panda? Well, FireEye identified a watering hole attack in July 2018. And in that watering hole attack, an RTF exploit for CVE 2018-0802 was delivered from viet-joe.com, a compromised Japanese website. It was found to have delivered Cobalt Strike as a payload, and associated payloads with that Cobalt Strike contained an AES encryption key that was shared with Red Leaves malware. And that malware is unique to the APT10 Stone Panda group. That's a pretty tight attribution. So how does this tie to Goblin Panda and the Schrodinger's backslash string? Well, the RTF that was dropped contained that same author and operator field. And an additional area that is interesting, in addition to the technical tool overlap, is that the website that was compromised was a Japanese website about visiting Vietnam, the primary area of operation for Goblin Panda. So again, what does this suggest about the tool? You can make a number of different intelligence conclusions that I'm going to review at the end, but it requires more research. So now that I've covered hopefully fairly succinctly, please call out at the end if you think I did a terrible job, um, activity that seems to primarily relate to Chinese APT. I have a confession to make. I have an outlier. And as a researcher conducting responsible research, it's my job to disclose that outlier so you as an uh, analyst can consume my intelligence and make a reasonable assessment of the confidence associated with my analysis. The outlier I have identified in this case appears to be an RTF sample for CVE 2017-8570 tied to the APT group known as Dark Hotel. So we ask ourselves, what is a Dark Hotel? Dark Hotel is an APT that is believed to be aligned with the Republic of Korea, so that is South Korea, uh, known by CrowdStrike as Shadow Crane, 
And their malware primarily years ago was known as in excess mar. And I believe Dark Hotel was Kaspersky. I might be wrong. Feel free to correct me afterwards. Um, this is a group associated with espionage activities targeting hotel Wi-Fi primarily. So why do we believe that Schrodinger's backslash is tied to Dark Hotel? Well, an RTF exploit was identified in the hunting ex exercise in which it was delivered from a C2, and that C2 is transferbitx.com. That C2, according to CrowdStrike, previously delivered a malware that shared strings with Blackspire malware identified via Dark Hotel C2. So let me say that one more time. We have a C2 that CrowdStrike has seen malware with shared strings that has appeared on Dark Hotel C2. That is three levels of removed from the original intelligence artifact. And from my perspective, that is a low confidence assessment. Not from CrowdStrike's perspective, but from my visibility of data. I have no doubt that CrowdStrike has a reason to believe this is Dark Hotel associated with the C2, but from my perspective, I can't see it, and therefore it needs to be a low confidence assessment. And based on that, the RTF identified being delivered from that domain that is not directly associated with the intelligence artifact is associated with Schrodinger's backslash. And as Sarah Jones told us yesterday, there was a number of different ways to make attribution mistakes and attach yourself to intelligence conclusions without wholly understanding your data. So in an attempt to avoid that, I'm rating this low confidence. With that being said, let me go ahead and make CrowdStrike's case a whole lot stronger. This particular phishing document, RTF, for CV 2017-8570, and <laughs> full confession here, I use Google Translate for that. So Viking sec, <laughs> we'll talk. <laughs> it was a Chinese language phishing lore that references the Huabei region of China, which is northern China, and invokes lore topics of military training in the northern region of China. This doesn't appear to be testing. This was uploaded from China. This appears to be active Chinese targeting with a tool primarily associated with China. Again, what does that mean, and how do we explain all of this information? Well, let's try to do a little bit of an ACH analysis quickly. What if we were to say this RTF phishing weaponizer is utilized by one distinct operator? Schrodinger, who's just so good, he's involved with multiple operations across all these Chinese and Korean groups in Asia. I would say that's unlikely. Based on the way these groups operate, function, and have funding, it is rare for one operator to be able to range across such a broad diversity of campaigns. We could say this RTF is a phishing weaponizer and a shared tool that distinct APT groups use in distinct operations, but they share a source. This is the digital quartermaster idea. They purchased this from the same person or same group. I would say that's possible. Again, low confidence assessment based on my data collection at this time, but I think it requires further research. And can I say that this attribution for all of the campaigns that I talked about is inaccurate and incomplete, preventing my definitive attribution? I would say this is likely, if not definite. So that's the end of the story. What did we learn? We learned that we need to account for all of our intelligence analysis byproducts, including things like virus total, including custom tools, including hybrid analysis. So we are sure that the strings we are searching for are not going to leave us with no results. We learned that RTF metadata can be used in, as an IOC to pivot between campaigns and identify historic campaigns. And we learned that attribution is complex. It's not impossible. If we maintain context and be open to additional information our peers' information and our outliers and responsibly disclose them, we can make really strong strides to understand what we're looking at. And then finally, advanced adversaries are going to maintain their tool sets for as long as they can remain effective. They use CVE 2012-0158 well into 2018, not because they liked it, not because they were attached to their tools, but because it remained effective in Vietnam as it started to drop off in every other region it was being utilized in. Patching is not the same in Vietnam as it is in other places. So they're people with budgets, learning curves, and adoption lag, just like us. If we treat them like humans and track them as humans, we'll be able to compete. All right, thank you, everybody.